So, Michelle, it was my birthday last week. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm that much older. At least I was just saying, you don't, you don't look a day over 55, 60. <laughs> and you're right in the ballpark, well done. Uh, All right. Now, I got a great present. I was really, like, I got, I got some great presents. I got a Paul Keating tea towel from my missus and a really nice bottle of whiskey from my boys. But I also got an espionage bust. Yes, the United States busted two spies. Oh, I and, missed it. Oh, no, they busted two spies. And Amazing. It, rem- it reminded me of a couple of spies that were busted while I was working at ASIO. So we're going to have a look at this modern case, the Toebis, and we're then going to look at this old case, the Walker Spy Ring. This is going to be a great episode. It's my birthday episode. I'm celebrating. Happy birthday to me. All right, let's crack in. You're listening to I Spied, the unwrapped birthday present of Australian intelligence. If this is socks again, I'm going to kill someone. Can you just wear socks for once? All right, I'll put it out of my head. Preferably your mouth. Hello and welcome to I Spied. My name is Michelle Stevenson. I'm here with David Callan and we're getting back to basics. We're going to... Tuck into some old school espionage tales. Getting down and dirty with them old school spying. And I'm really excited about this. This has got tradecraft. This has got puzzles, enigmas, all this crazy stuff that you expect. (laughs) I can't wait. And it's all about Jonathan and Diana Toebi. Now, it's it's spelt Toebi, T-O-E-B-B-E, but I think it's German based, so it's probably Toebe. But no one knows. Uh, In fact, pretty much everybody called Toebi on the planet because, yes, I went there, lives in the United States. I love how you do the deep dives on the minutia of every story. That's where the secret lies. So anyway, he's a nuclear physicist, was old John. He was working in submarine propulsion for the US Navy. In fact, he worked there as a Navy officer and then quit and stayed there as a civilian. And his wife was a school teacher and doctor of anthropology. Now- Here's the thing. A school teacher and a doctor of anthropology. Well, you know, you look at kids, they're just primitives, really. Yeah. It's just like dealing with a primitive tribe as a teacher. Trust me, I've taught. It, it, yeah. You are dealing with savages. It's like Lord of the Flies every time you show up. Oh, mate, don't get me started. I teach at Cranbrook at the moment, and let me tell you, it is Lord of the Flies, and yeah. I'm piggy. It doesn't matter how many times I hold the conch, they will not listen. Anyway, let's get back to the Tobies. Yes. So let's just call them the Tobes. The Tobes, Tobes. makes it easier. Oh, the Tobes. Tobes. Right, totally, Tobes. So anyway, Jonathan Tobes and Diana Tobes approached a foreign country. I do the air quotes again that no one can see. I yeah, I don't know why you do that. It's a podcast, mate. I know. But, you know, uh, by explaining it, everyone goes, he's doing air quotes. He's an yeah. idiot. Yep. So yep. anyway, they approached a foreign country. Now, this country has not been identified, and we'll get into this. Now, they approached this foreign country to sell nuclear secrets for cryptocurrency. Okay. Why not? Um, yeah, I mean, now, there's a lot of money to be made in crypto at the there's moment. There's a lot of money. And you know what? If it's been given to you by a foreign country, air quoted, then it's free money, literally. So anyway, this foreign country held onto this offer for six months and then told the FBI they'd been approached. What? Now, uh, yeah, they what? sat on this information for six months. Now, keep all of these ah. time figures in mind because it may help to identify who the country is. So the FBI then ran a sting operation against the Tobies for about a year where the Tobes were getting contact with what they thought was the operative from a foreign country, and it mm. was actually an FBI officer. Now, the FBI officer kept sort of like saying, look, we've organised this place for you to dead drop your information. Yep. Uh, very smart. Jonathan wasn't quite the idiot we'd think he was. They basically, The Tobes basically turned around and said, look, we don't know much about this, so we're going to set the sites because we don't want you to set the sites in case we're compromised and you're not the people we think you are. Turns yep. out they weren't the people they thought they were, and in the end, they got busted. So, right, essentially, they ran this one-year sting operation mm. until they were finally arrested on October 9th, and they went to court on October 12th. So, very quick. They don't muck around. Yep. Now, the interesting thing about this is what they were using for dead drops. There was the peanut butter sandwich. Mm-hmm. So, they put an SD card in a peanut, half a peanut butter sandwich and then just dropped it in a park. Okay. That was picked up. They used a- What if you had a nut allergy, though? That would be terrible. Not great. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we couldn't get that. Why? I'm allergic. I, I just oh I didn't- I, There's I a lot of people up. with nut allergies. I mean, I, I feel like an, you need a better sandwich. Look, most spies would carry an EpiPen just as a matter of course. I mean, you could use it to torture somebody by making yeah. them less allergic to something. Yes. So they used that. They used a chewing gum packet. Oh, that makes and sense. The, and the other thing, they put it in a Band-Aid. Gross. A used one? 
Just to give it realism? Well, I would. Because remember, yeah. that, okay. let's go back to our Moscow Rules bite-sized episode. Mm. Remember how the CIA used to use rats to move Yes, stuff I mean, around. that's disgusting. So yep. half a chewed up peanut butter sandwich. No one's going to want to, want to touch that. No. Uh, it was in it. And then, oh, actually, the <laughs> this is what's really funny. You know, They just threw the peanut butter sandwich on the ground, but the Band-Aid was in a Ziploc bag. Gross. Yeah, okay. it's like you're collecting them. So essentially, they kept repeating that they were amateurs, and by God, they proved themselves right. They were absolute amateurs. But okay. there's a couple of really weird questions that have come up out of this case. Now, it's a very early case. We don't know a lot about it. First question is, why? Why? I know. That- why would you risk? Because the jail time would be horrendous. We'll get onto that when we talk about the walkers, because the, the prison sentence mm. for, for espionage is pretty harsh. Yes. Right? Now, the thing is, they were a nice, normal... Middle American family living in Washington. I think they had two kids. You know, they, they had the whole thing. They had it all yeah. tied up. You know, he was on good money. She was on good money. Pro- teaching at a private school. There's always cash there. So they didn't need the money. So yeah. and there's nothing in their records to say that they were bankrupt or anything like this. So the mystery is why did they do it? The second thing is mm. who were they doing it for? Because it comes down to the foreign country. Now, having done my deep dive, as I do, there are uh, a couple of clues as to who it was. One, yeah. in one of his messages, I, he says, I'm sorry, I'm, my message is probably garbled. I'm not very good speaking your language. Yeah. Right? Which automatically indicates, oh, my God, it's a non-English speaking country, or at least the predominant language there is not English. The other thing was, this is a country that, actually then informed on them. So it's a cooperating power. Now, okay. if it's a cooperating power, who can we take out? We can take out China yeah. and we can take out Russia. Russia. Automatically are off the list. So take those two out because they're not going to cooperate. They're just but why would not. They, why would they go to a power that would cooperate? Why wouldn't they just go to China or Russia? Well, here's the thing. It all depends on which country would ha- you know, it would be worth giving it to. So this is a country that either has a nuclear military capability or yep. has a a civil nuclear capability that they can build a military capability out of. Would you like to know the list of countries that it is? Oh, my gosh. There's probably a long list. Go. It's not that long. In alphabetical okay. order, Argentina, Brazil, yep. Canada, China, France, Egypt, Germany, India, Iran, Israel, Japan, South Korea, North Korea, Netherlands, Pakistan, Russia, South Africa, Sweden, Turkey, and the UK. I feel like that's a long list. It's a pretty long list, but it's not yeah. a really long list when you look at all the countries in the world. I know, but still it's pretty long to know that these people have nuclear capabilities. Well, they have reactors. It doesn't mean they have nuclear submarines. Which, right. Now, the thing is, a lot of people sort of like when you start eliminating people, North Korea, no, South Korea, unlikely, Japan, no, Iran, definitely not, Israel, maybe, maybe, okay. yeah. India, nah, Germany, no, definitely not. Egypt, no. France, that's the one everyone thinks it is. And I'm going right. to say no. One of the ones they think it is, is probably Argentina or Pakistan. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, and it comes down to that little list and also the timeline, 18 mm. months. What is a country that 18 months ago started talking about getting some nuclear submarines from the Americans? Us? Yeah. 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 Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, Australian English is very, very different to American English. And no worries. Basically, they've probably gone, I don't know what copper means, but I'll put it in my message. Did I use it correctly? But also, wouldn't you be doing this kind of deal swap with a country that you would potentially have to defect to? Ah, now that's the other thing that makes it really interesting. One of the things he said in one of his messages, which uh, Toby said in one of his messages, was... If I need to escape, I will have to go out through a third country, which means two things. One, it's a country that's going to flag a re- bring up a red flag because they're going traveling there. Yep. Or two, a country that doesn't have a direct flight from Dulles Airport in Washington. And that reduces the list a lot because, of course, Australia is out of list. It's not us. No, but also we don't have a direct flight at the moment. <laughs> well, no one's got direct flights anyway. No. Right, no. but here's the thing. The two countries that do not have direct flights – yeah, Argentina and Pakistan. Turkey could also be on the list because it would you need a visa to get in there, so that would bring up a red flag. Pakistan- you've done a big, you've done a big map, haven't you? You've got a big map on your wall, and you've done like you've got the the yarn, and you've like doing this whole like mind. Look- 
No. Right in front of me right now, my entire <laughs> blanket fort is just yeah. red cord going everywhere. It is. You're the red cord guy. You are that guy. And at guy. the end, I'm going to light it. It's going to go dun, 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 and my, <laughs> my blanket fort will explode. So this is the whole thing. Yeah. It's this mysterious case, but also it's an absolute failure of espionage. They absolutely blew it because they gave themselves up yeah. the very first time they did. Uh, they made the offer. Would you like to hear about a story of a guy who absolutely freaking nailed it? Nailed would it. Would I? I would love to. John Anthony Walker Jr. He was a U.S. Naval Communications Office uh, warrant yep. officer, right? So an yep. NCO. Uh, he was like basically ran submarine communication for the United States Navy for years, yep. right? Back in the sixties. Now <laughs> he walked into the Russian embassy in Washington and went. Oh, uh, here, by the way, is uh, a whole bunch of military intelligence that you may want. Uh, I want $500 to $1,000 a week, and I'll keep bringing it in. And the Russians went, okay. Okay. Duh, we do that for you. This guy ran his ring from 1967 to about 1983-84. This is a massive trick. Now, he was selling secrets all this time, and they were big secrets. They weren't little piecemeal things. He was giving them the manuals to cryptographic machines. So these are the machines that the military used to send coded messages to each other. Yep. He was giving them not only the keypads so they could actually operate the machines, he was giving them the manuals to operate the machines. In fact, that is believed to be the first thing he gave them. Now, the interesting thing about that was the manual is useless and the keypad is useless unless you have the machine. Now, about a mm. month or two after he started sending this information to the Russians, the North Koreans stopped a ship in what was known as the Pueblo incident, the USS Pueblo, which was a small trawler that had been converted by the US Navy into a spy ship. Right. The North Koreans grabbed it. They literally sailed out into the Pacific Ocean, grabbed it and dragged it back to port. And then yep. all the cryptographic machines were instantly thrown across to the to Moscow where they started playing with them. So there was that. The other thing he was telling the Russians was about the hydrophone network the US Navy had, which are just little monitoring stations underwater that can hear submarines. Mm. And it taught the Russians that their cavitation, the sound of their propellers, was being picked up by these hydrophones, and then they were able to steal through him information that would allow them to mill better propellers that were quieter. Again, submarines just figure so heavily in all of this. But then he was posted out of the submarine section, and he didn't have any more intelligence to give. And he wound up being the guy who trained the communication staff for the Navy. Well, he meets up with a guy called Jerry Whitworth and he turned around and he said, I'm selling secrets to the Israelis because we need to protect the Jewish people. Will you join me? And the guy did. He started okay. supplying the intelligence to Walker and then Walker quit the Navy in the, oh, the late 70s yeah. and he quit, he quit the Navy and realized I'm losing access. So he recruited his brother, Arthur. Then he approached his daughter, Laura, who was working in the Navy, but she was pregnant. And she said, I don't want to, uh, I'm pregnant, I'm going to leave and have a baby. To which he turned around to his daughter and said, that's okay, I'll pay for the abortion so you can keep working for the Navy. Okay, lovely. He's not, look, it gets worse. This guy is a real, and then he recruits his son, Michael, who was working on the USS Nimitz. So mm. he's still handing out all this material. Now, while this is all going on, the big question is, why did he do it? Well, one, he was money. a rat bag. Well, definitely money, because yep. what he had, you'll love this. He, being like most naval officers, went, I like drinking with my friends. I'm going to open a bar so I can drink with my friends. All of his mates showed up one night and went, yeah, nice bar. And then they never showed up again, and he oh. wound up $60,000 in debt. Right. <sighs> He starts selling secrets. Now, the thing was, it was really good for his bar because he was able to actually hire a bar manager to run his bar for him, and his bar started making money. But then the Russians, of course, said to him, whatever you do, whatever you do, do not spend you know, like crazy man. Just live normal life. So yeah. what did he do? Went out and bought a mansion to put his family in, and then oh kept God. buying sports cars and having mistresses everywhere to the point where his wife was sick of it. 
In fact, his son was called Michael. His son should have been called John Walker, or John Anthony Walker the third. Yeah. But John Anthony Walker Jr. was so drunk that night with his mates down at his bar that he forgot to show up to his son's birth. So his wife called him Michael out of revenge. And the relationship did not improve from there. Um, right. He was abusive. He was had multiple mistresses. He basically ignored his wife to the point where she became an alcoholic. And then she started, she found some material at home mm. and started calling the FBI going, I think my husband's a KGB spy. Why would you do that? Revenge, uh, okay. which is exactly what the FBI That's the worst kind of revenge, though. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait gets better. So okay. what happened was she turns around, tells the FBI. The FBI just like basically looked at each other and went, she just sounds like a bitter ex-wife that wants revenge. Oh, see how de- – like, of course they don't believe the woman. Yeah. Now, at this point, Barbara and John had gotten divorced. Now, yep. John wasn't paying his alimony either. Oh, what a right. piece of shit. Absolute deadbeat. <laughs> Absolute deadbeat, yeah. this guy. Total, trader and deadbeat. Everything wrong with him. Right, yeah. so essentially what happened was he. she rang, she, she told the FBI, the FBI went, yeah, sure, love, whatever your problem is. Yeah. And then Naval Communications Intelligence basically turned around and went, we actually, there could be something here. Maybe you should re, re- reinvestigate. So they interviewed mm. the uh, Barbara yeah. on a polygraph test. And it came through clear. And then they went and talked to the daughter, Laura, who first thing she said was, you're here to talk about dad. Yeah, he's with the KGB. She basically admitted it. They put her on a polygraph. Done. They've got this guy banged to rights. Yep. So essentially, they started an investigation. He's been tailed. He's, all of his phone calls are being intercepted. Finally, they saw him drop a package. Now, this is the interesting thing. Remember, when you talk about the Tobies or the Tobies or the Tobies, yep. what are the Tobes? Tobes. You talk about them. Tobes. They're trying to hide SD cards. Now, an SD card can hold a lot of material. Back yeah. in the day, for John, he had either manuals. Now, one thing you could have done with that is take photographs of them and just leave them on an undeveloped roll of film. But, you know, that's why he couldn't smuggle out a machine. So what no. they did was they had to have packages that they would drop. And again. Well, a lot of his stuff had to fit inside like a Coke can, a soft drink can. So this is the thing. Again, how do you move the physical material from one person to the next person? So that was eventually how they picked him up. He dropped a package under a no hunting sign in a park and then went and stayed in a hotel. Now, by this point, John was working as a private eye and he had a little trick for stinging people when he wanted to get photographs of men having sordid affairs in hotels, he would ring from the front desk and say, I'm sorry, but somebody's hit your car. And they would run out of the hotel and then he'd take photos of him and the girlfriend in the bed. Well, what the FBI did was they rang his hotel room from the front desk and went, yes, sorry, man, someone's hit your car. He came running out and the FBI jumped him. Right. So- Jokes on him. (laughs) Jokes on him. They used his own thing against him. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let's get down to punishment. What's going to happen to the Tobes? Well, they are not being charged under the Espionage Act. How come? Uh, Because they're stupid. It's (laughs) difficult. It's really difficult to charge someone under the Espionage Act. It's a lot easier to charge them under the Atomic Information Act. Yeah, I mean, the espionage portion of it considering they weren't that intelligent in the way that they approached things, I, I would imagine that it would be hard to prove that they even knew what espionage was. Oh, no, no, no. They can, it can definitely be proved, but it's easier for them to convict them under the Nuclear Secrets Act through the Department okay. of Atomic Energy. Well, right? yeah. Which is actually a huge part of the intelligence community. We forget about it, but it really is. Now, the thing is, they're in for a lot of trouble. Because when it comes to John Walker and what happened to him, mm. first thing he did when he was arrested, he admitted everything. He just confessed. Yep. Went, yeah, 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 I did it. It's all true. And one guy, one admiral turned around and said, you know, this guy has done more damage to the United States war effort in Vietnam and intelligence effort than any one other person in history. And he would he have liked like, that. But he was like, I do not understand how this man could do it. Walker's <laughs> response to that was, Kmart has better security than the Navy. <laughs> Great. But he basically turned around and said, you guys are idiots. It's easy to break. And yeah. to be perfectly honest, for somebody with a bit of wisdom, a bit smart, they can get around this. Yeah. John made a, a plea bargain so his son would get a lenient sentence. So John was given life. 
Wow. He passed away in 2014 in prison from complications arising from diabetes. Crazy. If he hadn't passed away, he would have been eligible for parole in 2015. So he missed out on getting out by a year. That plea bargain reduced his son's sentence to 25 years in prison. Oh. That's good. But why would you even involve your children if you know that that is the sentence? Do you know what I mean? Like, why would you set them up for that kind of failure? Because no one's going to get away with it. That filthy lucre. Ooh, that money. Ooh, Uh, that money. I know, but still. When when he was arrested in 1985, like 1984, they, they figured it out who he was. When he was arrested in 1985, 1985 in the US is known, or in the intelligence community in the US, is known as the year of spies. They picked up- dozens of espionage cases. Yep. The US intelligence community just had massive holes in it, particularly the military. Yep. Now, let's look at the other guys. His brother, Arthur. Three life sentences plus 40 years. What? Why? What did uh, he do? Well, he didn't. He basically fought it. Instead oh, of going, yeah, I did right. it, it's fine. Uh, okay. Plea bargain, plea bargain, plea bargain. They went, no, no plea bargain for you. You're going into prison for three life sentences Holy shit. plus 40 years. Oh, my gosh. So, right. you, that is like you're never coming out of that, ever. Oh, there. We can go one better here. Oh, gosh. If you here think go. three life sentences plus 40 years is bad, mm-hmm. spare a thought for Jerry Whitworth, the guy who thought he was helping Israel. Because when it was finally revealed to him oh. that you weren't helping Israel, you were helping Russia, he went, okay, cool. That's cool. I don't mind. That's cool. What happened was he got a $410,000 fine. What? A four hundred and ten thousand dollar fine. That's it. And three hundred and sixty five years in prison. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So for anyone out there, if you're contemplating, maybe like a who who would be contemplating this? Anyone with a like a financial problem, which is why ASIO, mm. when when you go and do your security review, which is a regular two year thing, the first yeah. thing they ask you is how are your finances. Well, that makes sense. You don't want to be compromised. And the thing was, once these guys started making the money, that money, as soon as you take it away, just imagine what happens to your lifestyle. What happens to the bar? What happens to the sports cars, the girls, the houses, all that stuff? What about your life when you're in jail for like 365 years? Yeah, well, 365, yeah, that's a <laughs> lot of marks on a wall somewhere. So when you look at the Tobes, they're facing something very, very similar. Now, there's one other thing that I really love about the Tobes. It really okay. made me excited, particularly The fact that they're going to leave their children like without parents. I mean, no, no, that's no, no, going to no. be great. It was FBI that did this and okay. NCIS. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> no, it was the, it, truly, it, it was the NCIS. Was Mark, was Mark Hamill there somewhere? If Gibbs didn't bust them, if Ducky <laughs> wasn't there looking at a corpse and Abby wearing a very cool pair of boots and Tony and all of them, you know, it was Gibbs. Gibbs busted them. That was yeah, to me. Right. When I just saw that, I went, yay. Not that I watch NCIS. My wife watched all of them. She watched all of them. I never got involved either. It wasn't my jam, but my my mum was well into it. She had a thing for Mark Hamill. I mean, that generation did anyway. Everyone has a thing for Mark Hamill. I got banned from watching it with my wife because I just sit there and go, no, no, that's bullshit. Wouldn't happen like that. She's just like, shut up. Just shut up and get out. (laughs) Right? So the whole thing- Don't spoil it for me. Don't don't ruin it for me. It's my stories. So- (laughs) Happy birthday to me. We got yeah. ourselves, we, we, we found one. And now the thing that I'm really excited about is what is going to be revealed as this trial goes through, right? Yeah. The stuff that came out about Walker was the amount of intelligence this guy got out of the country. So they're, they're, they're looking, though, they're looking at a pretty hefty sentence, right? Well, here's the thing. Nothing was actually ever exchanged. I mean, a lot of people are saying, doesn't this technically become entrapment? But they volunteered it to a foreign power, and that foreign power then informed the FBI. Six months later, what did they do with all of that material for six months before they went, you know, everybody photocopied it all, built their own nuclear reactor? Oh, yeah, 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 totally, totally. You know that they've benefited somewhere along the line. Excuse me, but we don't need this. (laughs) Yes. This oh, we, we found this. We found this like about six months ago. We, we haven't opened it. I yeah, haven't, haven't, yeah, haven't opened it. Haven't oh, opened. Well, it fell over and it ripped, right? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, this no, is no. the thing. So there is a country out there that got all of these nuclear yes. secrets and we don't know who they are and we don't know how much they kept. To me, this is just like best birthday ever. Yes, you got to unpack the best present of all and that is an espionage story. Yes. Happy birthday to me. (laughs) 
Some people take the straight path in life. But at Arizona State University, we respect your twists and turns. They make our online students more driven to excel in their professional lives. That's why our personalized suite of services empowers you with innovative resources and staff that sticks with you. Make your next turn with one of our 300-plus programs at ASU, a top 10 university for online bachelor's programs. Tap to learn more or visit us at asuonline.asu.edu. Looking for a new career? Welcome to Do HVAC Training Service Center in North Charleston. Enroll today in our comprehensive HVAC training hands-on field experience-based program covering troubleshooting, maintenance, installation, and more on various HVAC systems and ductwork. We offer EPA and NAIC preparation and testing along with various certifications. Enjoy payment options. Achieve certification in under five months. Enroll now for your new journey of skill development and career advancement. Log on to DEWHVACTrainingSC.com to enroll inquire. 